Hey YouTube, it's Jay. I know it's been a little while, um, not trying to make excuses. I've had some technical difficulties. I'm actually hoping the camera doesn't blow up again. Um, if it does, I'm just going to have to get a new camera and you won't see this video. Uh, today we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to start talking about routes. Uh, we haven't talked about these yet. Very important. We're going to talk about it. Uh, and we're also going to, uh, so we're going to introduce the idea of routes and we're going to talk about the effects of uh, the rails on spin. Um, not the way we have been. We're going to talk about practically when you're shooting your routes, how to understand what the cue ball is going to do at each rail that it contacts when you have a multi-rail leave. Okay, so to start out with, um, Let's define a route. A route is the way a ball moves around the table. Pretty simple, right? And what we want to do is find is have commonly used routes that we can use as a reference when we're playing in order to be able to get the leaves that we want and to know what's going to happen. <clears throat> now, we could be talking about we could be talking about knowing How the cue ball is going to move around the table in order to get our leave and also avoid the scratch. It's also it, not only the cue ball but also knowing where an object ball how it's going to act as it goes around the table for purposes of playing safe. If I don't know, oh no, I'm in trouble. I just gave away, just sold out the game. If, on the other hand, I can control the route that the four ball takes, I can, I can use my speed to guarantee that I end up safe. See, even if I had rolled out here, I'd still be safe because I knew where the four ball was going. Okay, so routes. Could be any ball on the table. Uh, whether it's the cue ball, whether it's another ball, um, we're talking about how you move things around the table. Okay, so the simplest way, the simplest to execute is the straight line route with no rails. The cue ball can only do one thing. It can go forward or it can go back. The angle is determined. Um, so forget about all this stuff you've heard elsewhere. Here's the deal. If I send the object ball through the center of the pocket, that's my line. The cue ball is this far off of that line. See, see this, let me get that top of the mark, this first one. Okay, so this is the straight in line. There's my ghost ball. That's the angle the cue ball is coming off of straight. So right here. So this angle here is the same angle on the other side that the cue ball is going to take. And if it goes forward, it'll be up here. And if it goes backwards, it'll be right here. Okay, that's how you figure out your real angle on, on these straight in routes. Okay, now let's say I want to get right here. A lot of people will be tempted to slow roll this ball. I'm just off of center, I'm, I'm right there. A lot of people will just slow roll this for their leave. That is a bad habit to get into, okay? Yes, you can do that, and yes, it's fairly easy to control in that particular case, but the right way to shoot this shot is to make use of the rail. Okay, the right way to shoot the shot is to shoot it with a little bit of authority and use the rail to get that wave. It's much more controllable. It's not speed dependent. Instead of going across the leave zone, we're coming down the leave zone. Yes? Okay, so on those shots, whether it's a draw or a follow. So let's say you have something like this, right? And you're going to draw it. You don't want, what you don't want to do is float this ball. I know it looks easy, 
but it leads to bad habits. Okay, and there, there's a good chance of, or there's a chance of messing up your stroke because you're hitting it soft. You want to hit this with a reasonable amount of authority. You get that set back up. And you either want to go to this rail or this rail so that you can guarantee your lead. Now you don't want to come anywhere near the corner. But that is a much better shot than trying than just floating it, okay? Understand that. That is really important. It is better to put it in with authority, draw to the rail and bounce out, than it is to float. If you're floating, you're coming across the leaf zone. If you're drawing in, now you're coming down the leaf zone, which is our most preferred way of getting the leaf. Okay, so that's about all I'm going to say about straight in leaves. Don't try to float them. Make use of a rail. That's, that's no rails we've been talking about. One rail is pretty straightforward. The side that you hit the cue ball on, we've talked about this at length. If you shoot it and you have 30 degrees of spin, you'll get 30 degrees of spin in the direction that you hit it. If I hit it on the right, it goes to the right. If I hit it on the left, it goes to the left. And that is additive to the angle that it's entering the rail. So if I'm shooting here and I put 20 degrees of spin, instead of coming off at that equal and opposite angle, I'll come out 20, 20 degrees further. Okay, we've talked about the, that at length. Um, I forget the name of the video, I'll put a link to it down below or I'll put a, one of those slides up so you can get to it. All right, so what we really want to talk about today is the rail effects of more than one rail, okay? This is going to be really important going for, forward. So, before we get into these rails too far, I want to talk about running in Czech English, okay? And, and some people call it holding the ball, some people call it um, killing the ball. Uh, for my purposes, let me define running in Czech English. I've done it before, but let me define it again so you don't have to go watch another video to see it. Uh, if the cue ball is moving in a certain direction, and the spin is going to help it to move in that direction, it's running English. If on the other hand it's moving in a direction uh, and the spin is going to fight that direction, then it's going to, then it's check English. So what I mean is, if I shoot down here, my cue ball is headed this way, if I put right hand English on it, which causes it to spin counterclockwise, Okay, it's going to run on those rails. If on the other hand, I send it in that same direction and I put left hand English, which is going to cause it to spin clockwise, then it's going to check. It doesn't matter outside or inside. That is not, has nothing to do with running or check. If you, I, I did a whole video on how you could have running English with outside spin, and you could have running English with inside spin. Um, I also did it, I also talked in there about how you could have inside, how you could have check English with outside spin and check English with, with inside spin. We are not talking about outside and inside, we're talking about running and check English. Is the cue ball spinning in the same direction it's moving, or is it spinning in the opposite direction from what it's moving? Here's the way this works when you're figuring out what your English is going to do. You have, two pair, you have two pairs of rails. You have two long rails, these two, and you have two short rails. As your cue ball is moving around the table multiple rails, you will find that if it's alternating pairs and rails, that it will continue to do what it was doing when it when it gets to the rail. So if I have running English on it here and it alternates to the short rail, it'll have running English here. If it then alternates to the long rail, it will have running English there. If I have check English here, I will have check English here. And if it came in at a sharp enough angle, I will continue to have check English there. So let's, let's just look at that real quick and see, how, see that work. So I'm going to shoot a five rail shot. You know, you heard me mention that as long as we continue to go around 
and go and, and alternate pairs, long rail, short rail, long rail, short rail, long rail, short rail, long rail, short rail. It doesn't matter how many times we go around the table, if it's running when it starts, as long as we're alternating, it will continue to alternate. Now, at the point where it's no longer alternating uh, and it still has spin on it, um, then the effect reverses. So I can go running, 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 because I'm alternating long rail, short rail, long rail, short rail, long rail. I can also shoot a little wider and go long rail, short rail, long rail, long rail, short rail. Now what happens? Um, well, the effect uh, switches. So in that case, long rail, short rail, long rail, long rail. So here, here's where we're switching because we're going across without hitting a pair. Long rail, long rail, short rail. So running, 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 check. And then this is the pair again. So long rail, short rail means check, check. Okay, everybody got that. Doesn't matter where you hit it in the series. I could go short rail, long rail, okay? Running, running, short rail, running, long rail, running. Yes. I could also go short rail, running, long rail, running, long rail, Notice we're, we now we didn't switch pairs, so long rail running, long rail check. Now we're back into our alternating long rail check, short rail check. If for some reason we went running, running, check, and somehow got over here, this would start running again. Okay, so <clears throat> doesn't matter where in the pattern it it crosses without touching. The, the alternating pair, doesn't matter. What matters, it, uh, at that point, it will switch what it's doing from running to check, and then it will continue, uh, and it's almost, it, it's very rare that you would have check here, and then go over here and start running again, if you went running, 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 check, running, 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 I mean, that would be a heck of a hit, and you're going to lose your English anyhow somewhere uh, you, somewhere in here, maybe right after that. Um, so it'll be dead ball by the time it gets around this way. But that's how it would work, in theoretically. Um, so let's talk about a, a common misconception real quick. Um, you will hear people say that as the cue ball bounces back and forth across the table, that the English reverses at each rail. Okay? And what they're talking about is not that the English reverses, it's that the direction reverses. So if I hit this with left hand English into this rail, it will go left, left hand, which is running English in this case, and then it'll go to the right, which is check English. If I hit it with check English, it'll come, come short because it's going to the right, and then it'll hit this rail and go off to the left. And you saw that in the Carlo Beato video. Um, there's a really good one in the Earl versus Jason Shaw video where Earl takes advantage of that and he does uh, something that the announcers just didn't understand could be done apparently, which is to drive it forward with top inside English. He hits, hits down and he hits this rail, this rail, and then it just rolls up for his shot on the side. Um, beautiful shot well executed he slams that ball to get it to do what it does <clears throat> um definitely worth watching that uh strickland versus shaw uh and i think it was um i want to say it was turning stone uh if you get a chance to watch that one that is an amazing amazing match you should really go watch that one you'll learn so much uh from both players not just from Earl. all right so anyhow um, what's really happening is that I'm going to use Czech English to demonstrate this because it's, it's, it's more dramatic when it does it. So if I hit this on the right, what's going to happen 
is the cue ball is going to spin counterclockwise. It's going to be spinning counterclockwise. And when it spin, spins counterclockwise going into that rail, it makes it come up short. And when it's spinning counterclockwise in that rail, it makes it go long. So effectively what we're doing is we're doing a check off this rail and a running off that rail. You see that? Came backwards, went forwards. Okay? The spin didn't change. It was counterclockwise the whole way. We, and we can do it with, with uh, running English too, but it's not as dramatic. Okay? Um, I'm going to shoot a five rail shot around the table with running English. Okay? So I'm going to run, run, run. It's going to hit here, so long rail, short rail, long rail, short rail, long rail. It should run the entire time until it runs out of spin, okay? So as it hits each rail, friction from the cloth, friction from the rails, it's gonna slow down the spin on the cue ball. Eventually the cue ball does run out of spin. When it does, then of course all bets are off. It's just a dead ball. Okay, so let's, um, Let's take a look at this. Running, 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 and we have no more spin, so now it's not running, now it's just a dead ball. Okay? So you saw it. We were alternating rows. Running, 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 and then it ran out of spin and came down and hit these two rails as a dead ball. Okay. What if we go without hitting the other pair? So now we go, let's say, let's say we go long rail, long rail, or I'm sorry, long rail, short rail, long rail, long rail. We skipped this short. We hit this long rail instead. Well, because we're hitting a member of the same pair, what's going to happen is the effect is going to reverse, okay? We're in, it's going to be, what's going to happen is it's going to go running, 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 check, check. Okay, why does it do that? Okay, while we're running, while we're, while we're alternating rails, it's continuing to do what it, what it does. Long rail, short rail, long rail. Okay, so whatever we put on it here, it'll have here, it'll have here. Running, running, running. Then, um, then it doesn't hit this short rail, which is the next one in the in the series. Instead, it hits this one. So, long rail, short rail, long rail, long rail. It will be check English when it hits here. The next rail after that is the is the short rail. It's the other one in the it's the other pair, right? So, if it's check here, it's check here. So. The five rail shot hitting the long rail first has check English on this rail. <clears throat> and we'll get ourselves a little wider uh, shot here so that we guarantee we hit that rail so you can see this happen. Same shot. Running, running, running. Check, check. And dead ball after the second check. Uh, by the way, <clears throat> check English almost always is dead ball after the second rail. Two checks in a row will basically kill the cue ball off, kill, kill the spin on the cue ball. Now there is an exception to that, uh, and we're going to talk about that one exception really quick. And that one exception is if I go, if I double a rail. So if I go long rail, short rail, and then back to the same long rail, uh, and th that is only possible with Czech English. Uh, when you do that, it's check, check, running. So check, check, running. Does that make sense? Cue ball spinning clockwise. It hits this, I'm sorry, cue ball spinning counterclockwise with Czech English. So it's fighting the momentum. So the momentum's that way, check check and then it's still spinning and it's running now because we changed the direction okay um 
that's that's our one exception uh, to the officer pair rule is when you double a rail. When you double a rail, uh, the second time it hits the rail, it reverses what it was doing. And it's only possible with check. You cannot use running English to hit this rail, hit that rail, and have it come back. Impossible. Only can be done with check. So check, check, running. All right. <clears throat> All right, so let's show the other way of doing this shot. Um, so let's say I put a whole bunch of check English on it. So I'm going to hit this rail, this rail, this rail. But this time I'm going to have check English on it, okay? Now it's not going to get down here. I'd have to hit it incredibly hard to get it to come down to this end of the table uh, because I'm going to be putting check English, which is right English in this case, it makes cue ball spin uh, counterclockwise. It's going to hit here, it's going to hit here, it's going to hit here, but what you're going to see it are two things. One is that it's going to be checked on all three rails. Actually, you're going to see three things. You're going to see that it's checked on all three rails because we're going long rail pair, short rail pair, long rail pair. It's going to be check on all three rails. The second thing you're going to see is that the cue ball slows down because the spin is going in the opposite direction of the momentum, which is going to make it grab the, grab the rail and is going to make that, um, is going to, to take momentum off of the cue ball. The cue ball is going to lose a lot of momentum because it's fighting, it's going one way, but it's spinning the other way. So it's going to slow down. And the third thing you're going to see is that it's going to be check here, it's going to be check here. It may not have check by the time it gets to this rail. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna try this and see, let you see it. Um, if I use check, it's going to check off this rail, check off this rail. It will probably lose its spin before it gets to this rail, so it'll be just a dead ball roll on that rail. So let's go ahead and shoot that. I'm going to hit this hard. I'm going to hit this really hard so you can see the dramatic slowing of the cue ball. So did you see it? Check English here, check English here, and then it just rolled into this rail and down. Okay? So that's, that's how those rails work. Now we're going to get into this a lot more when we get into the, into the multi-rail routes. Right now, my point was to just talk about we're going to do routes, show you the two basic routes, which are one rail and no rails. Uh, so one more shot I want to show you to demonstrate this and then we'll, we'll call it a video. Uh, so this one's kind of neat. Uh, What I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot long rail, long rail, short rail, long rail. And so think about that for a second. Take a second. Think about what it's going to do. I'm going to shoot this long rail with check English. So check. So long rail check. Then we're going to the other pair. We're going to the same pair again. So long rail check. Long rail running, short rail running, long rail running, right? We, we hit the same pair but after that first rail. So check, running, running, running. Did you see that? Check, running, running, running. Okay. What if I add one more rail to it? What if I go here? Check, check, running, running, running. You would think, so, so here's one uh, kind of weird thing to understand about this is that once the cue ball becomes a dead ball, it's going to pick up running English, okay? So, According to the rule that we've been talking about up to this point, if I go here with hard check English, hard inside English, hard check English, we said that this would go check, check, 
Running, running, running. Yes. Okay, there is one more really important point I want to talk about it, and that is when you use Czech English, the cue ball at some point becomes dead. And when it does, matters. Because once it becomes dead, then the next rail it hits becomes running English. Remember the rails add running English to your shot. So if the ball go if the ball loses its spin and it's just a dead ball hitting a rail, it becomes running English. Okay, and there's a really dramatic place to, to show this. If I shoot this rail with Czech English, and then it goes to this rail, our assumption is, short rail, long rail, that it will go Czech English off of here, right? And if it's Czech English off of here, then it's going to be running if it hits this rail next, right? So short, long, long, we hit the same rail in the pair. We expect this to be Czech, and we expect this to be running, then it hits this one running, then it hits that one running. Okay, we just showed it with the four rail shot, right? We just showed that if I shot here with check, that it would run on these three rails. But, if I go this way, this cue ball is going to become dead at some point, okay? It could become dead after the second rail, which is where it usually dies off, in which case it's going to be check, check, dead dead ball, pick up a little bit of running, basically dead ball with just a little bit of running English on it when it hits there. If it loses the check English in here before it hits the second rail, which it can do, it's, it's, a, it's a function of speed and spin. If it becomes dead in here, what's going to happen is it's going to hit here with check, it's dead ball, it hits here, it picks up running English, then it goes over here, well, long rail to long rail, if it's running here, that means it's check here, and it's check here, and let's look at that one. Let's go ahead and execute it. So you see where the cue ball loses its spin matters. If it loses it in here, running, check, check. If it loses it after this rail, it's check, check, dead ball, running, running. Okay? See the dead ball? See the running? Okay. Where it becomes dead ball matters. So that is that I wanted to make sure I covered that because otherwise you're going to see those weird shots like what I just did and say, but that doesn't follow the rule. Well, it does follow the rule, but you have to understand where the cue ball loses its spin and you have to modify your speed to make it do that. Now we're going to get into this a lot more when we get into the, into the multi-rail routes. Right now, my point was to just talk about we're going to do routes show you the two basic routes, which are one rail and no rails. Um, you know, of course, uh, and then uh, to talk about the rail effects on the cue ball and how to know whether the cue ball is going to run or going to check when it hits a given rail in the series. So if you like what you saw, hit like, hit subscribe, ding the notification bell. Please, if you have questions about this, if you have any questions at all, Put them down in the comments. I will answer them. And if necessary, I'll put a video and demonstrate.